Jack Posobiec for Rebel Media here, the Washington Bureau Chief. I'm here with Roger Stone, uh, former Trump advisor and uh, one of the generals, the top generals of the Trump movement in 2016, now moving into 2017. Roger, you just put out the book, The Making of the President, talking about that Trump revolution. And now we're seeing the Trump administration take their first steps. We're getting very close to the first 100 days. And people are talking about uh, a movement in a different direction almost. There's a lot of shakeup in the White House. What are your thoughts? What are you looking at? What, how do you see the situation? Well, actually, I'm relieved that despite the fact that the president appears to have surrounded himself with a substantial number of establishment Republicans, by and large, they don't, they don't seem to have been successful in diluting Trumpism. Uh, he continues to push for the restoration of Glass-Steagall, which would have a profound economic effect on the country. Uh, he is uh, using executive orders and the regulatory authority of the departments to roll back uh, Obama regulations, too numerous for us to mention if we talk for the next hour. Uh, he has given us a conservative Supreme Court justice without much of a struggle. Uh, he has, um, I think, not changed course on China at all. I think he fully intends to deal with their currency manipulation and their unfair trade practices, but at the moment, I think he has put those aside in the interest of getting their assistance on the North Korean issue because it really won't matter what our trade policy is if we're annihilated in a nuclear attack from those maniacs. So what is your take on um, on the Syria strike? A lot of people are saying that that's, that's caused a bit of a rift in the Trump movement. How do you see it? I don't think that it has caused a deep division. There is a, a, a very substantial number of Trump supporters, myself included, who are, who are uncomfortable with the, with the Syrian strike. That said, the geopolitics of it seem to me to be irresistible. It sends a strong message to the North Koreans. It sends a strong message to the Iranians. It sends a strong message to the Chinese. They had a ringside seat. Uh, Over chocolate cake, we learned. And that, there, and that there's a new sheriff in town, and that no longer will the President of the United States talk about a line in the sand and then sit back hopelessly when our adversaries step over it. So uh, from that point of view, and also, frankly, from the domestic political point of view, if Donald Trump is soft on Russia, why did he just kick uh, Vladimir Putin in the ass? So uh, I think it, it makes that whole phony issue begin to recede. I, I think the Democrats look pretty foolish after hanging themselves on that one. Th they do. So uh, I don't think you have a reversal on these issues. I do think that you have, you have some adjustments to reality. But it appears to me, despite the fact some have been circled, the president seems to still be deeply committed to Trumpism, which is to say non-interventionism uh, with, with limitation. He made it very clear in the campaign that he was going to deal with ISIS. ISIS is not his fault. ISIS is a, is a loose thread, is a hangover from the interventionist policies of Bush and Clinton, but they are a reality and they have to be dealt with. In just a few hours we found out he dropped a massive bomb yes. on ISIS in Afghanistan. Because I think he has said he never w was a, a bit coy about this in the campaign. He said from the beginning he would crush them and he will. So there's no reversal there. Um, we have a, sup a conservative Supreme Court justice, as I say. We have these regulations. The, the economic data, I don't mean just the the you know consumer confidence, manufacturing seg uh, segment confidence, but I'm talking about real economic data, joblessness down, job creation up. You're really starting to see solid results uh, in the real economic indicators. So I think in that sense, he's beginning to make America great again. Um, those who expected you know um, a perfect road here, I think, are unrealistic. In in say. Richard Nixon, you had a guy who was vice president of the United States for eight years, who got to sit there and watch how the federal government works, knows what the most important jobs are, knows how the system works. And Lyndon Johnson, you had a guy who'd been Senate majority leader, then vice president. He knew exactly how the system worked. Donald Trump's a businessman from the outside. He's never been in government before. He doesn't have anybody on his White House staff who knows anything about this. So talking about the staff, a lot, a lot of been, has been made about that. One story we've been following this week is uh, the rise of H.R. McMaster, the National Security Council, and the seeming uh, backpedaling or, or demotion, as some people have said, of Steve Bannon. Well, let, let's see. Let's take those separately. Um, 
General McMaster has been very clear about it, the fact that he recommended 150,000 boots on the ground in Syria. And it's equally clear based on his interview with the New York Post yesterday that the president's not going there. He's not buying it. So um, I think McMaster has just figured out that Donald Trump is his own man, that nobody puts ideas in his head or words in his mouth. Bannon, who is a friend, and I write for Breitbart, and I, I probably have a worldview closer um, to Bannon than, say, Reince Priebus, Steve, I think, has made a number of mistakes. He has not, um, not helped any other high-level Trump uh, anti-globalists get into the White House. On Steve's level, name the other veteran Trump people. None. Well, whose fault is that? Who, who fought for them? When Steve would not fight for Anthony Scaramucci, it sent a strong signal. Uh, the other thing I hear, frankly, from conservatives, from liberty-minded activists, is that Steve spoke to them often before the election, but now they can't get a return phone call. Mm. And that's, I, I think, uh, an egregious mistake. So he finds himself surrounded without allies. Right. And on top of that, you have the various magazines that had his picture on them uh, with the claim that he was Trump's brain. Well. I can tell you, having worked for Donald Trump on and off for 40 years, Steve's adversaries took that right to the president and said, see, Mr. President, this guy thinks he's your brain. Right. Uh, and that never helps you. If you read my book, The Making of the President 2016, which I highly commend to you, I say numerous times, Trump is his own strategist. Trump made Trump. Not me, not Steve Bannon, no one else. Donald Trump conceived this campaign, conceived of the issues without polling, decided how to do it. And he proceeded. I'm honored to have been helpful, but I'm not Trump's brain and I never have claimed to be. Steve Bannon uh, may never have claimed to be, but he let other people say he was Trump's brain and it's come back to bite him. Mm. So how do you see it moving forward if, as some of these reports go, Steve Bannon steps out of the White House, uh, there isn't that voice there anymore in the White House for the populist movement other than Trump himself? Well, there's no, but there's no evidence that that voice for the populist movement has been terribly successful. The good news is that the, the one guy who supports Trumpism in this administration is Trump. He knows what he believes. He knows what he thinks. Uh, and if a Bannon were to, be, um, were to go or to be sidelined, in essence, um, I still don't think Reince Priebus will survive as our chief of staff. Uh, I don't think Sean Spicer will survive, survive as uh, the spokesperson. And the question will then become, who replaces them? Uh, if not nationalists, are they replaced by people who understand the importance of nationalism and understand the importance of keeping the Trump coalition together and stopping it from, from factionalizing? Um, and therefore, we'd have to look to that. Are you are you at all worried about some of these uh, some of these hires? The the more of the uh, the Gary Cohns, the Dina Powells, that type. Yes, of, without question, they didn't support Donald Trump. They don't support him today. They're trying to steer him to a different course. Uh, but the good news is that Donald Trump himself, I think, understands that and he knows what his course should be. Um, I would be very surprised if Gary Cohn or Dina Powell became the next chief of staff. This administration can still fall apart. Donald Trump could become unreelectable, but the only way he does that is not being defeated on his agenda. It happens if he stops fighting for his agenda. In other words, he's tried to pass the travel ban twice. He's failed twice. There's no shame in failing. The only shame is when you don't try, when you don't fight. And he'll be back again and again and again until he gets it done. I really believe that. Where he would be uh, deserved is if he, if he stops fighting. So where a lot of people are coming from is saying that, uh, is he going down a different road? And I, I don't see that necessarily. I see it more that he's incorporating some more things. And as you said, he has a different perch now. He has a different constituency that he's looking at. But going back to the coalition, the chance were, you know, build the wall, lock her up for Hillary Clinton. That was the Trump Well, base. but in the, in the interview with Maria Bartomomo, he seemed to indicate that he was now completely open to the idea of Hillary's prosecution. So I thought that was a nice... And people haven't been making much of that. No, but, it, but it's right there for everybody to see. 
Uh, and um, prior to that, I think he was trying to be conciliatory, for which he got nothing from the Clintons other than, you know, spit in his face. So she needs to go to prison. Prison will be very good for her. And I hear, I hear she is now making phone calls to her donors discussing the possibility of a 2020 run. The best possible reason for, uh, for Jeff Sessions to convene a grand jury to begin looking at the Clinton Foundation. We need to get Chelsea in there, Bill, Hillary. Maybe they could get adjoining cells, who knows? So for, for our viewers, for, for the Rebel Media viewers, if, if they want to do something, if they want to continue this fight, continue this movement, what, what can they do? What can they do for me? Well, the single, the single most important thing in my view is to communicate to the president by email, through social media, by writing letters, and saying, Mr. President, I will support you if you will stick to your pledge uh, not to uh, go into an interventionist jag in Syria. I don't think you help yourself by attacking the president. I could make a case to you, despite the fact that I'm an anti-interventionist, that the that the uh, the raid in Syria has been effective as a one-time, limited surgical strike. If we follow it up with a full-scale Vietnam-type war, then Trumpism will have been, will have failed. But the president needs uh, reinforcement. When the president hears his people on, on social media or sees them on social media, I think that that helps bolster his resolve. So I think keep, keep pushing Trumpism online and keep commending the president when he does things right and pledging your support if he'll stick to uh, his basic principles. How do you see things shaping up for, uh, I know you don't have a lot of time today, how do you think, see this all playing out as we go towards 2018? It's just way too early to say. The single greatest fight that we face is the fact that Google and Facebook are now moving aggressively to kneecap us. And YouTube. To, to, and YouTube, to use uh, their algorithms and other uh, technical Demonetizing. I, right. I was uh, shadow banned on Twitter this week. You've been shadow banned many times. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, look, there. this is uh, clearly a, an antitrust action that can be brought by the Trump administration or a class action suit. And failing that, I suspect our, there will ultimately be a number of patriots who will uh, who will show up at Google. They're not going to choke us. They may think they are, but they're wrong. This is the single most important point we face because the re-election of Donald Trump is completely impossible without a vibrant, robust alternative media. And that's what we here at Rebel are. That's what we know you guys at Stone Cold Truth. And when you're on InfoWars, uh, when I'm on there and they have me on, those are the places that you can go to actually get this information. If you stick with the mainstream media, Hillary would be president today. No question about it. Thank you. Keep it parked here for The Rebel. We'll bring you more interviews like this, more groundbreaking analysis and inside information on what's going on.